for the ghost meat. I make them do it. Allergies. So this video is sponsored by Halls big site and so i have two people that requested story times and i'll put them up on the screen if you guys don't watch this video i'm not doing story times anymore and i think like some youtubers they say like this video like this video but like like the videos that you actually like okay because what i do is i go back into my youtube analytics and i look at the videos that you guys like or the videos that have the most amount of likes and then I make variations of those videos. So if you actually like the video, then physically like the video. So I know to do more videos like this. I love, I just, does anybody else love their recovering from a cold voice? I feel like it's so raspy and nice, like minus, the feeling of not feeling good like <laughs> oh my gosh i love my voice like, oh my god today is gonna be a very juicy story time where i talk about how i cheated and then got caught so it's about to be super juicy grab your snacks so something that is a very important key thing to know for this story time is that i am a dancer and um yeah that's a very important fact that you need to remember so just remember that i'm a dancer because it's going to come in handy later it took me like five minutes to detangle and i'm so happy with that oh and i'm really really happy with that um my hair is growing and it's gonna continue to grow this story time starts when i was i was seven or eight okay i was seven or eight and when i was seven i did one let's talk about how i was homeschooled so i was homeschooled from basically all of my school career K through 12, I guess that's what the people call it. And I was homeschooled, meaning I did not go to public school. I did not go to like in-person traditional school. And all of my work was done from home. Now, if you talk to some homeschoolers, then you'll probably know that um, a lot of homeschoolers do this thing called co-ops. And co-ops are where you go in person to a building or facility and you do your work there and i was in this co-op <laughs> i don't want to expose them but like i don't care about them that much but like i don't know what to call it if i should actually call it that um I, what, what can we call it I don't want to be offensive because I was going to say let's call it mayonnaise but that's kind of mean so let's call it um macbook so we got to this co-op called macbook and macbook was a little bit on the racist side like not really racist but like microaggressions a little bit of prejudice you know the vibes are not immaculate and this person was like oh my gosh i love your hair like can i touch it it's so bouncy like how does it move like that and <laughs> the, by the time they were like can i touch your hair they were already touching it so it was too late and i hate when that happens like why would you ask if you are already going to do but it happened and yeah that's the type of stuff that would happen like on a weekly basis you just gotta brush it off whatever so yeah we go to this co-op called macbook and macbook we go there once a week and you see your friends and you do your schoolwork, and then you don't see anybody till the next week 
So in MacBook, there's this thing called Memory Master. And Memory Master is where you like, you learn all of these subjects and then you get tested to see if you can remember all of the information like from memory. So that's why it's called Memory Master. So you memorize everything that you've learned over 24 weeks and then you go into like this room with like a proctor type person and then they just quiz you on everything so they had history and for history they have these things called timeline cards and i'm not doing my hair mm -hmm. the timeline cards they have information on them and they're really not that enjoyable to learn about because the history doesn't really matter between me and you. So yeah, but they want you to memorize all of the timeline, right? So They have these little flashcards and they have pictures on it and they really try to make it easy and enjoyable for you to learn. And then there's like these songs that they make to go along with the cards to help you memorize everything. So what my mom said was that I had to memorize the timeline cards and then she would quiz me on the timeline cards at the end of the week so i was like cool cool you know whatever i really i was seven or eight so i didn't even have that much work in the first place so at first i was like you know what i guess we'll just memorize it get quizzed on it and then that'll be it but me being the lazy taurus that i am the taurus that loves to procrastinate at times i was like i really don't like this whole learning the timeline cards for nothing like it really is not helping me out in life right now you know i'm seven years old i just want to worry about going outside to play in my 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 playground like i really don't need this in my life like cramping my style so i decided that i was gonna tell my mom that i needed to focus when she was quizzing me on the timeline cards and I told her that the only way that I would be able to focus, I don't know why I'm whispering. The only way that I would be able to focus if I had a blanket. So I told her that I needed this blanket. It was like, yeah, security blanket vibes. You know, I can't really say the timeline cards without the blanket. It just it doesn't work I don't I don't know what it is I would write the answers to all the timeline cards on a note card that was really small and I would go under the blanket and I would take the test and the sad thing about it is I'm really a scammer like finesse queen all of that like I was really out here I was really out here scamming like I vividly remember putting like the pause in my voice to act like I was thinking about to act like I was thinking about my answer so she would ask me like okay so what's the next timeline card and I'd be like um um I think it's and I would just get it right so it was working y'all like it was going down for a couple of weeks my mom I don't know how it happened like I don't know that the day that she found out what was going on I don't know how she found out I feel like she just 
ripped the blanket like off of me or something and y'all she was mad and that's very understandable because what what could you be so busy with at seven or eight to the point where you felt like you could not study your schoolwork like you had one job you had one job my parents discussed it they discussed you know everything and they decided that i would not be performing in the spring concert at dance and this broke me up inside like when i tell y'all if you could have a beginning life crisis that's what i had i was torn up they were like you know what so since you don't want to do your schoolwork you're not going to participate in the spring concert and the sad thing is um my the spring concert was always around my birthday because my birthday is May 7th and the spring concert will always be like May 6th or May 8th. And the concert was definitely around my birthday. I hope y'all can't hear that. My mom made me call my teachers at dance and tell them that I could not do that. I'm laughing about it now, but it was not a laughing matter. My teachers kept saying like, Christian, you know, you can just like rehearse the dance with us because your parents might let you decide last minute that you can do it. And I was like, no, they're not, they're not gonna change their mind. And I felt like, I don't know, I think now I think that I should have got a different punishment because it's not fair for me to inconvenience the whole dance team, like, because of me. That's not fair because we have been rehearsing for the show all year and I just, I don't think that was the right punishment, but, um... Yeah, I had to call my dance teachers and tell them that I could not perform. And one of my dance teachers started crying. She was like, Christian, she's such a good dancer and she's such a good student. Like, I can't believe she did this. So I had to sit in the audience and watch the dances that I was supposed to be dancing in that was terrible and the sad thing was i was in the front like when they spaced those dances originally i was in the front so they had to respace all my dances or all the dances that i was placed in they had to respace them and i had to watch all my hard work go down the drain and I was I was crying in that audience because even with me telling my teachers like um, my parents are not going to change their mind like you know you have that like one percent of hope you're like oh well maybe they'll change their mind you know maybe they're really just trying to trying to like act tough and and the day before they're gonna be like you can perform this was not the case so I was in the audience I was sad I was like first of all you're already telling me I can't dance. Now you're telling me I have to sit in the audience and watch them perform dances that I was supposed to be in? I didn't want to put you guys through the torture of listening to the rest of the video because um, the air conditioning turned on. It was so loud. But I was basically just talking about how it's crazy how when I was seven or eight, I was cheating on my schoolwork. And now... I am on the dean's list and I have a 4.0 in college. So, yeah, the moral of the story is do your work and then you can just push it out of your brain. Okay, so 
hope you guys enjoyed this story time i'll see you guys in my next video bye